Performance Report on the Gameco Commander 3 and Jurdan slip forming of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. It was a foggy morning when we arrived at the beautiful Bill Emerson Memorial Suspension Bridge that spans the Mississippi River and connects Cape Girardeau, Missouri to the state of Illinois. As with most bridges, the parapet walls are one of the final touches. Jordan is proudly displayed on the Commander 3, as Jerry and Dan Driscoll are very involved in the operations and proud of their company. Jerry is the owner and Dan is the project manager. The company specializes in Commander 3 slip forming, bridge parapet, median barrier, and curb and gutter. They have some 41 different molds. Our video shoot and the pour got rained out as we thought it might, so we interviewed Dan under the canopy at their office. This bridge work includes parapet wall and the center safety barrier, and there are three different profiles. There are approximately 8,500 feet of safety barrier and approximately 6,000 feet of medium barrier um, on a job here in Cape Girardeau for our trailer brothers. One of the uh, medium barriers is 18 inches wide at the top, three inches wide, uh, three foot wide at the bottom, and 34 inches tall. Uh, another one of the safety barriers is uh, 10 and three quarter inches wide at the top and 20 inches wide at the bottom. And there is a different profile for uh, the medium barrier on the Illinois approach that is actually two safety barriers with a four inch gap in between the, the two bridges and it has a seven inch top with a 16 inch base. The mix design is a MoDOT B1 with air uh, it's approximately 6.73 bag mix. The slump was running um, between three quarters and one inch. Consistency of the material is one of the major factors in successfully slip forming vertical concrete. Very consistent. Um, last week we have, well within the past week we have poured uh, I would say close to a thousand yards and on site we have put less than 10 gallon of water in that thousand yards so it's very consistent. A common theme with the Commander 3 is that on delivery it takes off running. One of the, our finisher foreman, the guy that you talked to over there, I seen you talking to him, uh, Chris Marklin, he, um, he said that uh, it was like stealing money from us you know, trying to, to finish it because it's just, it's, it's just coming out so smooth and uh, the machine's doing such an excellent job that the finishers have very, very little to do. The wall gets a light broom finish and later joints are cut. There's our joints saw, they're different uh, whether you're on the cable span or whether you're on the approach slab, um, the approach span from the Illinois side, the joints are are different. Uh, on the cable span, I believe that they're about every 35 feet. There's a saw cut, and um, it just saw cuts in one inch deep and has back a rod put in it and um, silicone uh, sealant over that. Um, on the Illinois Approach project, they have at the center of a cap, and they have. Uh, a total, I believe, of eight cuts. They have one on the center of the cap, and then uh, every 10 foot thereafter for a total of um, eight cuts at each, uh, at each cap. Yeah, Illinois specs and Missouri specs? No, it's all done under Missouri specs, but this is unusual. Um, there usually is a saw cut, according to Missouri specs, there's usually a saw cut over the center of the cap and 10 foot each side of the cap. And for some unknown reason to me, they uh, have added a few extra cuts in there. But everything is, uh, it was bid as a MoDOT project. Um, it's, and it's all done under MoDOT specifications, both sides. 
and I think Illinois is uh, doing their share, paying their share of it. Jerry and Dan have built their company around Gameco products and are very familiar with the Commander 3. We actually have uh, two other Commander 3s. We have a 97 um, that we usually pour carbon gutter with, and we have a 2000 that stays in, uh, in barrier mode, and then the 2003 will stay in barrier mode. When they started looking at the new generation concepts in the Commander 3, they wondered if they were going to have problems with changes in new technology. The smart track is probably the, the biggest thing, uh, and the, the operator seems to like it really, really well. Um, I thought I might have a problem, you know, with the op. One of my questions was, am I going to have uh, an argument with my operator trying to get a new, a new piece of equipment and trying to learn it? And uh, Tom Held, my salesman, said the only argument that I would have between my operators is who's going to operate the new one. So, and I, I think he's probably right on that. Dan said the G21 controller didn't scare them at all. He said that along with the Gameco distributor, the Gameco service representative, and Gomeco University, they keep abreast of new technology. Actually, uh, no, I didn't scare him at all. No, I was more scared than he was. Uh, but no, he, uh, Gene from, uh, from Gameco came down and uh, he's a wealth of knowledge. And uh, so Gene Grayson, and uh, he's a, uh, just a wealth of knowledge and, and uh, very easy to work with. Um, we think it's, we think it's uh, important to keep up with, uh, with the changes that, uh, that have taken place over the years and for us the last 13 years. Um, and we will be going to uh, the new generation school this winter. We'll have some people go there. Dan said that aside from the rain on this day, everything else has been going smooth on the bridge project. No, it's, uh, it's, it's been very smooth. It's, uh, it's ran extremely smooth. Uh, we have been pouring um, about, on the, uh, on the cable span bridge, we poured approximately 1,100 foot a day. Um, and on the medium barrier, the 18, the wide medium barrier, uh, we were getting uh, 4.3 lineal foot per cubic yard on that uh, center medium barrier that was so big. And um, we were, we had two short days and, and a long day. We, we, we did it in, we had 2,120 feet, we did it in three days. Um, but two of those, one of them we didn't start till 11 o'clock in the morning, and, and uh, the second one we were done at 2 in the afternoon, so a couple of short days on in a full day. We told Dan that a lot of people watching this tape will be considering slip-forming safety barrier for the first time. What's the hardest aspect of the process? There are so many variables that it's like a snowball effect. One has to, to work before the other one works. Um, first and foremost, if your machine is not set up correctly, uh, you're not going to get a good product out of the machine. And so to have the knowledge to set the machine up or, or someone with the experience to show you how to set the machine up is uh, foremost important. Uh, the mixed design, the slump of the concrete, um, is uh, can make it or break it, uh, give you a good job or not. Um, the other, one of the other important factors is, is your operator. Um, if your operator knows, and if you have an experienced operator or someone that knows um, about pouring barrier wall, then uh, things go pretty smoothly. He wanted to make the point that the Gomeco distributor network is a major consideration in purchasing a machine. I've known Tom uh, for 13 years, I guess, a little over, and uh, he is a terrific salesman, and he takes care of you um, just a phone call away, 
and um, Fabic has been uh, has been good to work with. Um, they are relatively the new distributor for Gameco in St. Louis, and uh, but they have sent some people to school, and they've they've been uh, been good to work with. This has been a performance report with Jerdan Slipforming and the Commander Three on the Bill Emerson Memorial Suspension Bridge in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Uh, one, one fact that I found interesting that may not be interesting to everybody, but there's a three inch silica flume overlay over the panels on that bridge. And when that was done, and we put the two outside barriers on and the center barrier, the center of the cable spray and bridge will be two foot lower from when it was before those concrete items were put on. That's a lot. Gomeco, the worldwide leader in concrete paving technology.